So how was the outdoors? And did you get out much in, in the outdoors and wandering around the Juneau area? What, what was it like? Yeah, so there were five uh, major like mountain peaks there, and I tried to do all of them. I got four. I was close. Good job. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it's breathtaking. There's views of the glacier just from the highway. There's, I mean, there's multiple glaciers too. Um, it's just mountains on both sides and and the ocean too. I mean, it's it's just breathtaking. So every day on my work commute, it was just like, wow, I cannot believe I live here. <laughs> yeah. But I, yes, I, lots of outdoor opportunities there. It's, yes, I say it's on my bucket list. It's just somewhere I never got to I, or haven't got to yet. I, I've lived and worked in, um, in Seattle. Well, actually, um, uh, oh, Sammamish uh, and, and worked in Seattle for a while and did the drive over the, over the floating bridges with Mount Rainier off to one side and Mount Baker off the oh, other yeah. side as you drive to work every day. And there's something, the Olympics right in front of you. And there's something very, there's something very special about that, that when a trip to work is immensely pleasurable because of the scenery, work sort of changes. Yes. It's so, yeah, it's so true. I, that's why my contract in Seattle uh, went from three months uh, to, it ended up being three years. <laughs> I just couldn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special place. The rain in winter can suck a bit, but apart from that, it's a very special yeah. place. Well, for me, it was a step up from Michigan winter. So I was, you know, slowly getting better. <laughs> Although moving to Juno then was a step in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You're heading north as opposed to south. So how, yeah. how do you work out what to write about? I mean, do you just pick a destination and go there and figure it out afterwards? Do you come up with a plan? What's, what's the way forwards? It's usually pretty spontaneous. <laughs> it's usually, I mean, usually I'm just enjoying the trip, not really thinking about blogging. Um, would just travel a lot with my friends, plan road trips. Um, and then after, yeah, I would, a lot of people would ask like, oh, where did you go when you were there? And that would just kind of motivate me to put together a blog post kind of talking about what people would be interested in, um, what gear I use, you know, just, it's kind of based on what people on Instagram tell me they want to know about. And that, that kind of fuels my, my blogging motivation because otherwise I'm just kind of writing into an abyss and it's for nobody. And if I'm just writing about my my travels for me, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't find much enjoyment out of that, mm. but sharing it with other people definitely is where I find my motivation. What is it they most want to know about on Instagram? Um, on Instagram, it's mostly itinerary based. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've had this conversation where trails and spots become overcrowded, you know, responsible tagging, that, that conversation. So it, it's a lot of like, oh, where did you take this picture? <laughs> so I'm trying to steer it more in the direction of here's how you can find spots like this too and plan your own road trips rather than, you know, here's exactly where I went, which I, I do some of that too, because itineraries are fun. And I do enjoy talking about it because I put a lot of time into planning my trips. Mm. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I think Sometimes. That, you know, a lot of people are maybe, I won't say cash rich and time poor, but certainly time poor when it comes to traveling. And yes, th there's a certain magic in finding the unknown spot yourself and getting either just a mind's eye picture or a, or a real photograph that you've taken. Um, there's a certain magic in it, but it also that requires risk because you could spend a week exploring to find that perfect place and, and not find anything. Um, right. Have, have you had any dramatic misses where you've been like looking for that unique hidden spot and never found it or? Um, I'm sure I have. I, <laughs> for me, luckily, I'm thankful that traveling in general and just being outside is is really what makes me the happiest it's not it's not so much about the photos or or the blog content I mean it's it's a bonus if I can spin it after you know to get content but I mean for me just in general exploring and and having those experiences are great and especially if I'm on a road trip with friends like even if we're somewhere that's not very scenic it's still such a good time 
Oh, but yes, I've definitely, I've definitely had some spots where I'm like, oh, where are we? <laughs> this is not very great. <laughs> where was, where was one that jumps out to you right now? There is a spot in Oregon. I, I hate to even say it because it is beautiful, but like the spot we were going to kind of like what I was just saying, like Instagram makes these places sometimes look better than they are. So it was, I was, went, I went with a friend and we went to this like kind of boardwalk spot in the Painted Hills of mm -hmm. Oregon, which you just wouldn't think it's in Oregon, but it's, it's like this beautiful red kind of sand landscape um, with even like different colored striations in the, in the dunes. Uh, but we got there and the boardwalk was like, I don't know, like maybe 50 feet long. It was like the shortest little thing and we drove so long to get there and honestly the drive-in was prettier than this spot so they're like what what is this huh <laughs> what did we do <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy